Hello, my sewing friends. This is Friday Sews. I'm Jen, and this is my sewing room where I make all the things and I have all the fun. I really do. Let me get right into the sewing. This past week, I was busy, and I started out by making Quick Sew 4138. I made view A, which is the dress, the jumper, the overall jumper, and you can see this has a full circle skirt. Mm -hmm. So I made it for the kid, my daughter, who is my youngest. I always call her that, the kid. So um, she loves a dress that can dance. And pretty much she's been that way since she was five and she's still that way. I made this from a cotton, uh, I don't even know what you call it. I don't think it's broadcloth. It's stiff, and I don't know if that's a sizing thing from the company. I got it at the Scrap Exchange in Durham, North Carolina, and I wonder if it was like a remnant that wasn't done right or something. But it worked beautifully for this. Um, that circle skirt, it gives it some body. The only thing about this fabric is that when I went to pull out some top stitching that I did, it was hard to pull those stitches out, and I don't think it was the stitches. I think it was the fabric. Well, um, I got overall buckles to put on the, um, for the straps. It has, uh, straps that cross in the back. It has a back invisible zipper. And I think they tell you how to put in a lapped zipper, which is kind of an old fashioned way to do it, but it's kind of cool too. Uh, so that there's that and then a button closure back there, but you could probably use snaps or hooks and eyes, whatever you wanted. So it turned out great and it dances. One thing I do want to tell you about this is that on that circle skirt, because it's a circle, it's hard to get the hem right, but this turned out perfectly and it was so easy. All I did was stitch at, was it half an inch or five eighths of an inch? I think it might've been a half an inch all the way around the bottom of the skirt. I had used a fairly small stitch, like a 2.5 millimeter stitch. So I just pressed it up on that line of stitching and then I brought it back over to the sewing machine and I turned it under as I went. And it worked great. And I like that better than trying to turn it under and press it because I just never get as good a result. I, I can control it a lot more if I'm just doing it as I'm sitting there, but I need for it to be uh, pressed, you know, the first time. So turned out beautifully. She's wearing it today. Actually, the photos you see are from this morning. I said, hey, before you go to work, I got to get some photos. So yeah. So for me, I made McCall's 4510. This is from 2004. I made view A. I was intending to make view C, which is view A, but with sleeves. And I tried the sleeves. I tried pinning one on and I went in to the kid and I said, sleeves or no sleeves? And she said, no sleeves. And she was right because the sleeves really did, I don't know, they threw off the balance, the proportions of it somehow on me. I don't know that that would have happened on everybody, but it happened on me. So this is it and I will talk about it in another review. My daughter, Emma, number two, who lives up in the frozen north, wanted a dress from an art gallery print that was rayon and it was beautiful and it had unicorns on it. She's very much a, a fairy tale princess. You know, if she could do that, move to a place where she could be a fairy tale princess, she'd do it in a heartbeat. Well, she asked me for this dress and she sent me a photo. She said, I love this. Can you copy it? And I said, sure. <sighs> I'm not very good at drafting patterns and I'm getting better. And I have resources now to help me with that. But uh, it was just a chore to get this thing done because I, all kinds of reasons, but it's Butterick 6314 adapted and you can see on the line drawings, that comes way up in the back. It's just like the front. Well, I cut it so that it would come way down and I put straps on it that are adjustable. And then I put a ruffle on the bottom. Uh, a lot of stop and start with this thing, but 
it turned out beautifully and she loves it. She said, I love this so much. So she dances around in it with her crown on her head and thoroughly enjoys herself with her unicorn dress. Uh, on my table right now, I will be working in this coming week on a few things. First of all, I'm gonna work on McCall's 4824. This is Laura Ashley from 1990. And I'm going to make the romper. And I'm going to do this because I was sitting at my sewing machine the other day. And my the kid walked in and said, that is the cutest jumper. I did a review on this pattern. And so I made it out of a cotton sheet. And it was blue and white. Uh, she said, that is the cutest jumper. And then I went to stand up. She goes, oh. Oh my gosh, it's pants. I love that. Well, the look on her face, she doesn't get that that happy about anything. And I thought, ooh, I can make you that. So I pulled out this. Now, the thing about this kid is that she doesn't care about color. She doesn't care about cut nearly as much as she cares about the feel of the fabric. So it has to be soft. So I found this microfiber sheet, which is very soft. And Trish from Pinky's Farm, who is a very sweet friend of mine, she recently made this pattern and she used a cotton sheet, but she put piping on it and the piping is so cute. And I thought, oh, I, do I have bias tape that's that color? I sure do. So I'm gonna pipe it with this. I have a... Uh, lots of cording <laughs> to make the piping. You can buy the piping, but I just don't know if that if I can find a color that would match. And I know I have this, so piping's easy. It's easy to make, it's easy to put into a seam, and I love the look of it. So yeah, that's coming up. Right now, spread out all over my table is tracing paper where I'm tracing it off. Now, this pattern is a 12, 14, 16, and I trace all of my patterns that are a, a size range. So for her, I just, um, I did the cheater's way of making it smaller and making it a size 10. And basically all I did was go around and I figured out how much distance there was between the 12 and the 14. And I did that same distance between the 10 and the 12. Uh, and I traced off essentially what is a 10. Now, I would not recommend that method all the time because there are ways that patterns are drafted and then those proportions change with the type of pattern it is, the type of garment that you're making. It's not dependable all the time, but for this, I think it's gonna be okay. I have um, also this that I'm gonna work on. Um, this is Simplicity 3061. And it was published in 1959, the year I was born. And I started this last year for the Sew Your Birthday Challenge on Instagram. And I got it done, actually. And then I didn't like the way that the collar was, was behaving on the bodice. I was having all kinds of trouble. Well, actually, I didn't get it all the way done, but not mostly done. And then I couldn't figure out the binding to go around this collar. And I didn't like it, didn't like it. And I thought, ugh. So I had done it wrong, actually. I made it from this periwinkle blue crepe that came from Joann's. So what I ended up doing was just cutting an entire new, entirely new bodice and an entirely new collar. And I did it the right way. I actually read the directions. And so I want to wear this for Easter. So I am going to try and work on that this week too. Well, I was sitting there this morning drinking my coffee and lo and behold, I, you know, all the Brits pop up with Friday sews, which I love. They're six hours ahead of me. And so, you know, they're always up first. So there's Adam from Adam Sews. Okay. First of all, Adam is a delight. He is a joy to watch. He is so talented. This guy he sews such intricate things that I don't know that I would even attempt. And I attempt a lot of things that I want to be challenged by. Boy, he's just, can make a quilt in a day. He's, he's just so gifted when it comes to creating and sewing and uh, yeah, just in general. So this week he's been making 
little pin cushions that are chairs. Okay, I'm gonna link that video right up here. And he, so I'm going along going, oh yeah, those are so cute. I think I, I have one of those in my, in my sewing room. So I'm going along watching the video and he's showing all of these little uh, armchair pin cushions, basically. And then he says, Jen from Today and Jen Sewing Room has one of these. And I saw it in a tour of her sewing room video that she did. In fact, I think it's the second to the last one and it's above her iron area on a shelf. And I thought, all right, did he sneak across the pond into my sewing room one night and figure out where that was and then sneak out, go back across the pond and not even say hello? How does this guy remember this stuff? Oh my gosh, this is what he was talking about. And it is adorable. I got it at Joann's one time. I don't, I think I just saw it and thought it was cute. And I have never been desperate enough to eat this little uh, bite-sized Snickers bar that says Raiders on it, but I've been tempted. But I use it for all my hand sewing needles. And it has little feet that are not really beads because they don't have like the hole. But uh, yeah, it's, I love this pin cushion. I always have loved this pin cushion and I can't believe he knew exactly where it was. And I will talk about that when I do my next tour, which is coming up. I don't think he was copying this, but you know what? His are so cute. And if you go on his website or ask him, he'll probably make one for you too. Last weekend, I have to tell you about this. This is all uh, having to do with life, but it kind of has to do with sewing because I wouldn't know these people if not for YouTube and sewing. Well, Michelle, my friend from Michelle Sews Again, was going to be in my town and she was going to be visiting with an old friend and she said, hey, I'll be in your town. So how about if I just call you and maybe we can get together and have coffee? And I said, great. And so she called me, she was finished with her brunch with her friend and she said, hey, I'm at Starbucks, um, what do you wanna do? And I said, are you kidding me? You're like six minutes from my house. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So we went over to Starbucks, I got coffee, she already had coffee and we started talking and we realized that we were gonna not, we didn't wanna be at Starbucks for the next you know, three hours. And I said, well, why don't you just come to my house? So we did, we came back here to my house, which was sadly <laughs> one step away from being under construction. I was moving shelving out and getting shelving back in and trying to, uh, too, too many things to tell you. But uh, we went out on the lanai and we sat and we chatted and we solved all the world's problems, all of YouTube's problems, all of everybody's problems. We talked for hours and have the best time. I just, the more I get to know her, the more I love her. She's wonderful. So we finally, you know, it got to be dinner time and uh, we said, let's go get burgers because we are the cheeseburger twins. We both could eat a cheeseburger every single day of our lives for the rest of our lives. And we are both desperately trying to get healthy. And so this was kind of a last hurrah, like let's go get burgers and fries. and. It was nine o'clock when we, she finally left to go home. She lives about 45 minutes away. Wow, we spent literally the entire day, which flew by. Oh, I would not know Michelle, except for YouTube. I think that's amazing. So then the next day she was having brunch with Sarah from Naughty Gnome Crafts. Sarah's also on YouTube and she does sewing, but she also does knitting very experienced knitter. And so I went and joined them for brunch. So the three of us sat down and we talked about YouTube and we talked about sewing and life. And Sarah is just as you'd expect. She is the same in person that she is on camera on her channel. And I just, I just loved spending time with both of them. It was funny. Michelle goes, Hey, long time no see. <laughs> Cause I had been like 12 hours but we just had a great time. So again, I wouldn't know Sarah 
except for YouTube. So I'm just, our Friday Sews family is just a joy. If you are ever in the South Florida Gulf Coast area or even Orlando, let me know or let Michelle know or let Carmen from Carmen Salome know or let Trish at Pinky's Farm know because we are all here and we would love to meet you. Last thing, the question for this week, which is what is the craziest place you have ever sewed? I have no answer. <laughs> I, I don't know that I've ever sewed anywhere crazy. Sewing doesn't get real crazy for me, at least not lately. I am really tempted to take my sewing machine out or at least one of them and take it out to the uh, lanai and sew out there. If I ever do that, I'll let you know. Okay, I think that'll do it for Friday Sews this week. As always, if you would li like to see a playlist of all of my Friday Sews, just check right over here. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and don't forget who loves you the most. <laughs>